Yo, do us a favor and yourself a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Make sure to tap that notification bell as well so you can stay updated. Now let's get to the video. Ill Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. Ill Sound Radio checking in, man. It's your boy Groove Nuke right here with Ed Day J. And to my left, I got Omar Raps in the building. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I appreciate you, bro. For sure, for sure. Appreciate you for coming through, man. On I this appreciate rainy, y'all, on this rainy man, Sunday. giving me this opportunity on this platform. It's dope. For sure. Appreciate that, for sure. All right, now, you know, we got to start with the cliche questions, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did you get your name, Omar Raps? Oh, All right, um, originally, uh, I was trying to come up with something, but I really couldn't think of nothing. But uh, with the Omar, you know, that's my middle name, my middle name. And uh, as far as the raps, you notice I got two P's in it, right? Mm -hmm. So the raps just represent... Um, oh my realness always pushed past scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And when I say scrutiny, I mean, you know, the scrutiny that go on within the country, being a black man in America, all the, you know, BS we deal with, but through it all, I'm, I'm here and I'm doing it with this. And on top of that, I really rap. For sure. So, that. You know, it's like a presentation. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Introducing myself, almost cliche. You know what I'm saying? But it's not cliche. Sure. All right, because outside you were saying, I think you said you've been rapping for like six years. Yeah, I've been consistent with it six years, yeah. But you said you wasn't releasing any of the music. I wasn't, man. I was just trying to figure it out, you know, me and my engineer, uh, Stasia. But, you know, I'm also, you know, she managed me too, so it's dope. But we most definitely was working on it for years, like just trying to figure out my sound. I knew I could rap, but I didn't want to be coming like everybody else you know i just wanted to kind of figure out my sound what works for me what don't work for me what i'm looking for you know instead of trying to you know see what other rappers may be doing and trying to follow what they do you know what i'm saying i got to figure out what was best for me so that's what i was working on and you know i do this seriously like i'm trying to be if I, i'm not trying to be that's why i want to be top five like when i'm done with this now you 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 recording for a long time. You yeah. never release these songs. So no. uh, how do you how do both of y'all critique these songs that I never released? Are y'all constantly listening to them? Like how how do that work? Or how do y'all get to the point where y'all say, okay, all right, now it's good enough? You know what? Um, I'm gonna say within the six years, right? When we was working on it, the first four years, um. I really was just trying to figure out my sound and maybe through the process of the last two years, I had a lot of stuff going on, but in the process of it, it became like therapy for me to do it. So now the connection was the emotionally, uh, it was subject matter and things that we all go through and it really happened. And it almost was me writing my way out of that. I was kind of, I was kind of in a bad place when I dropped my project last year. You know what I'm saying? So I literally broke myself out of that. You feel me? But I also built the confidence and found my sound. For sure. You now, know? now you said your um your manager is also your engineer. Facts. For sure. Now, man, I ain't gonna lie. So your manager's in the building stage. I gotta, I gotta, man. Can we clap it up for one time, yeah, bro? Because that's that's, for that's being an engineer, bro. Alone, then you got to turn around and manage. So you got to turn the song around. You got to turn around and manage everything that's gonna come after the song. Hey, man, that's, what can that's I say? Dope. She the sauce guy. That's dope. Yeah, shout <laughs> out. She know how to do it. For sure. Shout out stage, man. She in the building. So we appreciate her as well for even bringing you to this level to even uh, meeting us. So that's dope, bro. For yeah, sure. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Man. Yeah, that's, you know? that's cold. I and she appreciated that. too. I appreciate her, man. You know, like we just work at it together. You uh, know? Almost definitely. For sure. That's All right, explain explain that process, cause uh, I'm gonna assume that she was your engineer before she became your manager. Facts. Okay, so what what do you think she saw in you that was like, bro? I want to help you take it to the next level. I mean, just me going at it. I was in it all the time. I was invested in it. I was putting a lot of time in it. Um, you know, and I really was working at it, like every day, coming in coming in the in the house writing. Then hitting her up, hey, yo, I got to come to the studio. And I was consistently coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we just bonded like that and built the relationship. And um, she just saw the progression, man. And then, you know, she saw I was on to something. And she like, man, you know, I'm trying to do this anyway. So you might as well come aboard. You know me. And she really loved the music. Like, she worked hard for what she want. You know, this ain't no game for her. You know, she really 
do what she got to do to make sure it work. And she know that the artists were her hungry about it too. Like she really passionate about it. It's not really a money thing, but we want the money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Facts. You know, no, but it's not a money right. thing though. <laughs> it's up. You know, we we really tapped in with this shit and really do this shit because we love it. So it's up. around yeah. what time did you find like your run of uh, consistency? You know what I'm saying to the point where you real life breathing this every day. Man, um, it kind of always been like that. But I think I, as I became more confident about mm-hmm. it, um, that's when it got like really consistent, For sure. you know. And then people would be hearing, you know, the small circle I do got. You know, I like to be, I want people to be a hundred with me about it. Don't tell me something nice or raw or dope, and it's not dope. Exactly. Like tell me, I'm that type of guy. So once I start seeing them eyebrows raise up when they hear me say lines or they eyes get big, I'm like oh yeah, I'm on to something. And as I got confident about it, the better it got, you know. For sure. So. Now, you started this off by saying, you feel me, how difficult it is to be a black man. You feel me? Right. Now, you got artists that, that find it easy to, you know what I'm saying, put our plight into their music, you know, like the Kendricks, the Coles, you feel me? Right. But have you been able to find that balance of, of I would say, conscious and, you know what I'm saying, bars? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I think I'm a whiz at it, if I'm going to be honest. I think I'm dead nice at it, for real. What Now, how deep do you go into your life, you know what I'm saying? Are you are you giving people your soul? Are you making music for yourself? Are you making music for the listener? Like, when you go in there, what's, what's, what's the process? I think first I'd be making it for me because it's like a therapeutic thing. Like, the way I got in- introduced to rap was in a unique way. You feel me? Like, um... I seen Nas, and at the time, there was a video that was super old. It was way ahead of my time, and I had a, I kind of tapped in with that, and my OG actually taught me how to rap. Okay, you're going to have to break that down. Yeah, well, see, though. you know, it's kind of different. So I was kind of an angry kid, so I would be getting in trouble in school about it, you know. You know, black kid growing up, single parent, you know how that go. But it was one of them situations, and she got tired of me getting in trouble. She knew I was a good kid. But I just wouldn't ignore anything. Like, people would try me, and I would just go at it. So she was like, nah, you got to deal with this anger different. So she introduced me to rap. Like, she, um, my mother is, like, an artist. Like, she really into music. She could sing. Not, not sing, she could sing, you know, so she could really do it. And she was writing, too, but, you know, she had us, and she thought that was more important, you know. So that was something that she did. You know, but she loved doing it, and she always was doing it all the time. So I was already mesmerized by music. So when she introduced that to me, she even showed me Rams games, like showed me how to do stuff. Instead of you getting the whoop and go right. Yeah, like it was one of them type things. Like, nah, I'm gonna nah, I'm gonna knock you out, but I'm gonna also make you go do that, and you are gonna think about what you did, type thing. And I just got really good at it, and it was therapeutic for me. So mm-hmm. it came from that. So I say all that to say. Um, you know, I was introduced to it different, so I look at it different. Period. You know. All right, I got uh, I got pain queued up. Explain that record for us. All right. Uh, well, while making this uh track, we had made actually a whole bunch of tracks that day. Um, for a couple projects that you know we we recorded some projects or whatever. So in the process of it, um. The day before, I had looked at this picture or whatever, and um, it was this picture, this picture of Nelson Mandela. And at the time, Nelson Mandela was kind of like, you know, it was the only picture I seen of him where he was in there looking sad. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you see pictures of him, he looked uplifted, he looked happy, he looked uh, strong in spite of, but this one specific picture, he just looked like, man, it's over. So it just kind of stuck with me. and. Um, you know, I realized that the judicial system is most definitely the reason why we deal with a lot of these things mm-hmm. when you are a color, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So I just kind of tapped in with it and connect the dots and did it my own way, my own version of how I see it and how we connected to it, and how the cycle keep going. But at the same time, the cycle keep going because we don't know who we are as a people for real. Fact. Like mm-hmm. we, we always start off with slavery. But that's not why our history started. That started all the way Egyptians, the world's richest man. Can't remember his name right now. 
the Moors, um, just us oh, introducing about, uh, Mansa Musa. Yeah, mm-hmm. just us introducing um how we live today. Like it was different. We taught people about mathematics, science, being a scholar. You know what I'm saying? Uh personal how hygiene. to live, personal hygiene, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? We the goats. How to have sure. a system for a city. We didn't even have lights at the time, but we found a way to get big logs and had them uh, lit up and be lit for hours so we could be able to see at night. Just all them type things that people do this day, we connected to that. It all started with us. Even the whole country has built on itself how it became such this country, this big country that everybody loved. It was off slavery. So, and inventions that we never got a part of. Facts. So, you know, I just kind of tapped in with that and, you know, made it as short as possible. Yes, sir. We checking back in with our guest Omar Raps in the building with us now. Yeah. Uh, now, um, you are you spoke on um, you was in uh, a dark place uh, mentally or something with uh, the, your last project of last year, correct? Yeah, I was man. Uh, it was a lot of shit going on. What? Um, nah, you good? You good, bro? Um, now you say um, since um, uh, coming into music so therapeutically for you, mm-hmm. did that um, did that early. Of that, that early introduction to how you came into music, did that kind of ease you out through that last music process? Yeah, it did, man, because uh, I think I always connected my emotions with uh, a lot of stuff I write down, you know, besides me practicing every day. When I practice every day and write my 16, you know, before I go off doing what I'm doing or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, I usually do that for like ram schemes and wordplay to right. practice on that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I practice on that. So when I'm writing for real, it's always connected some type of way. For I'm sure. connected to it somehow. For sure. Now, when you off like in your ventures, probably at work or anything, do a lot of lines ever come to you, or do you write a lot at work or anything? I do, man. Um, I most definitely write every day. So when I do write six scenes, I leave and I might go off doing what I'm doing, work or whatever it may be. And in the process of that, I might have a conversation with somebody and they might say a word and it might just stick. And unconsciously, they having a conversation with me. It's weird, man. I figured out how to do it where I'll be listening to people. But at the same time, now that I said this word and now I'm ramming all type of words in my head. For sure. Connected to that word. Or well, having a conversation with them. Yeah, man. Like, I'm one of them type of people. Like, I'm big on energy, so... Whatever you say or may do, you know, it might affect me. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's why I'm big with who around me, too, you know? Mm-hmm. So. All right, speaking on that energy, a lot of artists in Chicago say Chicago don't help Chicago. How do you feel about that statement? Um, I don't think it's that. I just think that um, now what I will say, it's not a lot of platforms out here, like, we need more like this, Illinois, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think that the big outlets, maybe the radio stations, I mean, 92.3, pretty open about it. But it's just some disconnection there. Like, they not connected with the underground stuff or the up-and-coming stuff, like somewhere like a New York, you know what I mean? Or even a Atlanta. Like, they connected to what's going on in Atlanta, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I just think that's what it is. I think they just need more people that's working in them working at them working at them big platforms pretty much just being involved with them people even if that mean you got to get involved with somebody who may not he kind of got one foot in one foot out maybe he in the music industry but he's still connected to that underground stuff then maybe that's who y'all need to connect with so y'all could be more connected with the people so i think that's what it is i think it's really just a disconnect with the situation as far as the artists not supporting each other I think we do support each other, but it's a lot of other stuff going on outside the music that they may be involved in or not involved in. You feel me? So that make people hesitant too. Like it's a lot of artists that I think dope, but they into other stuff that I'm not into. I'm from that. You know what I'm saying? 
but I don't have to be in that. Right. You feel me? That's just not who I am. I be myself and everybody respect me just based off who I am. I'm being myself, I'm being smooth, I'm being cool. So I think that's the problem. I think everybody just needs to connect in that type of way. It's a disconnection based on people. A lot of he say, she say, or just not being involved because you here now. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. I think it's also a, a major industry problem as far as the music that take off. You know what I'm saying? Like the you would have you would have some bang bang shoot 'em up take off quicker than you know what I'm saying something. I would say more positive or or more fun, you know. And I, yeah. me, I never could understand that because it's crazy because the youth make the movements, and it seemed like the youth are fed the violence, you know what I'm saying, which mm -hmm. makes the music take off even quicker. Yeah. So it's it's hard to like I can't even I can't even say we can change Power ninety two WGCI none of those. I think they, you know, when when you got corporate dollars in it, it's it's a certain platform that they got to work with you know yeah. so platforms like illinois radio you know what i'm saying that's when the artists need to get behind a platform like ours mm -hmm. and we all push up together because like you get real right you get money for getting spent on illinois radio as long as your paperwork together you know what i'm saying so yeah. the same thing that those big platforms can can provide we can also provide you know so i think it's all about perspective and, and how artists look at it and it's like Bro, you got to be willing to take the stairs. You know what I'm saying? Because right. that 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 quick growth, like you say, bro, you put time in. You know what I'm saying? So when yeah. your time come in and a big check come, bro, you are gonna appreciate that a little bit more. Yeah. I don't think you are gonna be like, oh, let me go blow this. You are gonna be like, let me reinvest this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's so all about perspective money. out here. For sure, that that was very well said, bro. Appreciate I ain't gonna lie it. Appreciate to you. No cap, because sometimes we do forget since we are a black-owned media company, the power of the black dollar and the power of the support within our community. You know what I'm saying? If we all push each other forward, it'll probably be less to um to wear out. And a lot of times, just being you know a, a hungry artist on the rise or somebody who trying to make it anything, sometimes we can kind of get um kind of get uh, veered off by other platforms or. Of what they doing and then sometimes we gotta focus on the right now who here is right who here right now for us who here pushing us right now instead of the people who probably ain't even paying attention you know what i'm saying yeah and that's what i was yeah i was gonna say that myself too like just in general like mm -hmm. um if we had more platforms like i said earlier like y'all sure. i think it'll work out like y'all real professional y'all do things the right way y'all legit and y'all move different and there's a lot of people who who have these ideas mm -hmm. and want to do these things. So if anybody listening, Illinois is a prime example of you guys pushing it and elevating it and getting to a place where you making moves and it's all about evolving, so you always adapting. Absolutely. So that's the best thing to do. And you doing your uh, due diligence as an artist trying to connect with us, you know what I'm saying? You've been yeah, telling I us, you've been it. tapped in for some time, bro. That's really how it go, you know, support. And then shoot, now it's, it's so many other avenues that we got to offer that we can help artists like you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it goes a long way for sure. No for doubt. sure, for sure. Uh, appreciate it. All right, for the people who, who have never listened to your music, you feel me? Point them in the right direction. What's a couple joints they should go check out like right now? Most definitely check out Pain. We just dropped that. Um, Most definitely uh, my illest single yet that I dropped. You know, with stage on the mix, you know, she put her sauce on it. For sure. And I got my man Cartel on there, you know. I've been knowing him since high school, and he really could rap. You know what I mean? So it was dope, and um, I got to do more work with him, man. But, yeah, look at Pain. Check out Pain. And then check out the whole of my composure project. I recommend that, too, because uh, it gives you uh, a perspective of who I am as an artist. You know, I dropped it last year sometime in November. So yeah, tap in with that. And um I got a couple singles out that I dropped this year. Uh SOM was super dope, State of Mind. It was just a freestyle, but it's dope. And then um my homie uh DJ Scumbag Diggs, or Scumbag Diggs, he a producer. Um he dropped something. He from New York and it was featuring me and Cartel. That's out now too. For sure. So check that out. For sure. All right, let me ask you this as an artist. How does it feel? When you hear somebody else playing your music or somebody say, bro, this music touched me in a certain type of way. Yeah, that's everything, man. I'm just trying to do what 
the artists did before uh, did before me, like all the greats, like you know, Nas, favorite rapper, uh, Common. I always have a hard time choosing which one, but they my two favorite MCs. Um, but yeah, I love that man. That's what they did for me. They got me through a lot of things. It kept me from getting into things, and they gave me game too. You know, and it's not even game. realizing they gave me game. Facts. They probably didn't think of it at the time. They just speaking how they speak. It's godly, you know what I'm saying? It's from a different thing. For sure. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to speak godly. For sure. You know, these trying to be are, a god MC. These are artists who really um, influence the whole generation. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. sometimes we, sometimes we be like, dang, until we really at that moment, and you looking back on what really what you drew inspiration from. So yeah, that's, uh, that's dope. What's some artists that's like that you rock with today? Like that's either mainstream, underground, but what's some artists that kind of like still sharpen your pen to this day? Uh, yeah, I first off by saying there's actually artists in the city that kind of keep my pen really sharp. Man. You know what I'm saying? I spent a few that's been on the show too. For sure, so many you know, talented like, in the city. Like uh, I am God, um, Brittany Carter. Um, Freddie also, I think she really dope. For sure. Um, Jay Hayes, I really rock with Hayes. Cartel, sure. most definitely rock with Cartel. And there's so many other artists, but as far as big artists, um, I love J. Cole, I love Kendrick Lamar. Uh, it's a lot of underground stuff I like too. Like I love Rome Streets, I think he's a, a really dope MC. I think he might be the illest one that's um, up and coming right now. Um, Ransom, you know, I'm into like, you know, I'm into the boom bap backpack type rap. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm into. All right, I got SOM queued up, man. Explain that record before we get into it. All right, well, uh, well, after Hole of My Composure came out, you know, uh, this incredible producer named Backpack Beast hit me up and he was like, yo, it's time. I've been knowing him forever, but. It took time for us to work. So when he heard the project, he like, yeah, it's time now. And it was like right away. So he started sending me stuff. But in the process of it, Scumbag Diggs was sending me stuff too. So them was the artists, them was the producers that I ended up working with. I did a project with Backpack. We'll talk about that more as time go on, but it's super dope, you know? So yeah, man, um, in the process of that, that was one of the tracks that I recorded. Are you an artist or a small business owner? struggling to connect with your core audience? Well, today may be your lucky day. I'm Jay Think Ill of Think Ill Marketing, and our free marketing consultations are back. Last time we opened up our free consultations, we connected and helped so many artists and entrepreneurs that we want to help even more this go round. Our consultations cater to artists and small business owners with dreams of taking their vision to the next level. So if this interests you, then simply fill out the contact form attached to this video and let's connect. Until then, just think ill. We check it back in with all my raps. Now I got a um, a question for you, bro. I I ask this from time to time, but um, right. I always say that uh, music is is a very sustainable career, especially when you find uh, what you're looking for, find your niche, you know, find your uh, your pocket and everything. So, right. what's um what do you uh, define success as in music and like what? What's your end goal out of it? Um, well, I know people say money, but I don't think it's money for me. You know, I feel like the money gonna come just based off how passionate I am about it and sure. consistent and the hard working and et cetera. But um, man, just wanna be like when people, I wanna be that guy where 10 years from now, you got some of the dopest MCs like, yo, you know, raps most definitely influenced me to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of like what the greats did for me. The greats taught me how to rhyme, taught me how to um, be smart when I do it. It's okay to, it's okay to rap. It's okay to talk about these things that that's not so called popular no more. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only because what you said, the industry pushed that. I think the industry, it was easier for them to have the guys that um, make the guys that's not dope. Or I ain't going to say dope, but it's just not nothing there, really. It's just, you know, what it is. Mm -hmm. But they push that. It's easy to replace that. It's hard to replace somebody like a Nas, you know what I'm saying, or a J. Cole, 
or Kendrick Lamar or anybody like that. Like, you can't be like, oh, no, nah, you can't do this. They gonna be like, what? You know, they intelligent enough to comprehend that. But, but then you got people that don't know about the industry, right? Mm -hmm. They making the wavy stuff, which is cool because I like a lot of the wavy, uh, wavy music. I like a lot of that. I love Future. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's just all about, it's just too much of that. It's no variety of music no more like it was. Like, you think about that era beyond my time, but you think about that golden era when you had people like De La Soul, Trap Call Quest, but then you had a Keith Murray, but then you had a Biggie, mm -hmm. then you had a Nas, then you had somebody like a Busta Rhymes, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody like a Wu-Tang, you know what I mean? Or It was just a variety of things, and that was in one city. For real. You see what I'm saying? You could pick from different things, what you like, what you don't like, but now it's like, nah, we gonna push this, and this only, because it's easy. You know, you could throw him to the side, he don't know the business, and you could tell by how he rap, he not that smart. You feel me? So it's one of them type things. Now we connected on on things like this um this phone device. And dumb it down shut, too. You can shut them down, mute them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> mute them for real. <laughs> they be they be muting artists on on streaming sites. Well, it be crazy. crazy. For nah. real. Algorithm all that you can shut them down. You know what I'm saying? So we really came a long way and yeah. uh, and artists standing up and and voicing themselves. I feel like it's a lot more expressive as far as. Like the solo expression, you know, right. they can go whatever route they choose to. But like it's so many things that come into play about just like being like standalone, you know what I'm saying? Right. So for sure. And and now that you did put it we <coughs> was talking early and I was saying like how all these artists was like so uh talented, they grew up like right almost down the street from each other. You know? Yeah. So that's dope. What's um outside of Chicago, is New York your favorite region to rap? No, nah, I can't. Yeah, I can say that. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna say that. I love my city first because we sure. bring out so much dope music. We got Kanye. Oh yeah. Before you know, I bless him. I, we want him to get better. I never say nothing bad about him. Uh, you know, Common Sense. You know, you got Twister. You got Lupe Fiasco, who is like a rap god to me. Go. You sure. know what I'm saying? So Lupe Fiasco. It's just a lot of dope guys. We got a lot of soulful rap. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm into. I'm into the 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 samples and the rhyme schemes and wordplay and just painting a picture when you rapping. The mm -hmm. substance. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm into that. For so real. it's like uh we have that. For it real. just it's not in the forefront no more, you know? For but real. besides that, uh, yeah, I do like the East Coast rap. Like it's a lot of guys that I like. But it's because deep down, it's because they stick with that for the most part. Mm -hmm. You got the drill stuff right now. But that's only so many people. It ain't everybody, you know? Man, they coming out of nowhere. They they be having producers that's like 14 <laughs> that's still in high school dropping like them the platinum hits. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> it be crazy. That's, that's how much the game changed. The power but of that phone. For sure, bro. But I definitely feel like Chicago for the last almost 10, 11 years, bro, I think the, the whole just the music, everything, and the creation of it deserve more flowers, bro, because a lot of it, it's the, the influence was so high that – we can easily spot the influence in like one line. One, if you, you got one word to say on the track and you ain't from Chicago, you gonna know that inspiration came from Chicago. That's how potent it being, you know? Yeah, that's a fact, man. Like Chicago is like, I feel like it's a gem that everybody's still from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's cool because it's all love. Like, you know, the way we talk, the way we move. Absolutely. You know, now you got New York doing what we doing. Shout out to New York. Cause we all copy off things that we love and like, you know what I'm saying? We pull something from something. For sure. You know, but it's just one of them situations where, you know, we don't get that light like we supposed to, you know. And I think when the greats was doing it, you got a lot, a lot of people that you know they did as much as they can. But I feel like it's a lot more greats that is from the city that needs to, you know, just shed the light on it a little bit more. You know. Absolutely. It ain't what you do; it's just how you do it. You know. All right. Let me ask you this. If you can go back and give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Start attacking this sooner. That's what I would have told myself. Attack this sooner. Now, I respect and um, believe and trust in the progression of the music, but I would have told myself sooner. Like, yo, let's get at it. I'm talking about as young as 14 
I've been rapping that long, but I would have been attacking it. Like, oh, yeah, let's get this. We got to get there, you know? But, you know, I don't regret nothing at all. I'm not a person who regret anything. All right, before we get out of here, tell the people how they can get in tune with you, stay in tune with you, find everything you got going on. All right, you can uh, most definitely follow me on Instagram. It's just omar.rapps. Um, Twitter, it's just Omar, capital O M A R, capital R, capital A, capital P, capital P S. That's on Twitter. And, um, Oh yeah, I most definitely uh, got a project, co- not a project, but I got a single coming out soon, so be looking forward to that. I do got a project, an EP coming out soon too. I keep you updated with that, but I do got a single coming out, Hustle Sale. Be looking for that soon. I feel like it's one of them tracks that's most definitely gonna change people's perspective on things. Not just with me, but just with what's going on. Like when you hit a song, it's gonna be dope. It's just pretty much about the things we go through being in the city Mm-hmm. Us not having no options And now we in this This gang shit You know what I'm saying And we trying to find a way To get out It's fun at first But then you win it And now it's not fun Cause all this Is happening now You feel me Like real stuff That's causing To put yourself in danger And your family And now they trying To get out of it And some people Don't get out of it So just think about That perspective When Before listening to the song But it's a storyline It's dope and I really tapped in with it because I, I got real homies, real fans. I mean, real homies, real friends, f- fans, and my uh, own family members that's into that. Like, they really, you know? Mm-hmm. And now they want to get out of it, but it's hard because they have made so many mistakes. And that's the trap. You see what I'm saying? You get in it, and then you can't get out because you ain't allowed them to get something on you. And now you can't get out because now it's like, man, I did so much stuff. Even if I get out of it, how am I gonna do this and do that now? I could have went the straight route, but it didn't happen because that was my option at the time and nobody was telling me this. So I, I really want to put that in perspective and have people think about that once they get through hearing it. And I guarantee they're going to think about it. So, Facts. all right. All right, Jimmy, talk to the people. Yes, sir. Hey, shout out to our guest, man, Omar Raps, for coming through, man. It was good hearing about your story, bro. I appreciate you, y'all. Early, man, no problem, man. We appreciate you for coming through. You know for sure, saying? for sure. Like, Keep doing what y'all doing. For sure. Like, y'all was, y'all asked, that, like, what was some of our favorite interviews, you know, right. and um, how did we start? You know, we just start, if the, the, the way we start off everything is just a basic conversation. Then it just turn over into something else. You know what I'm saying? Turn right. over into learning about you, you learning about us, learning more about our platform. So we appreciate you for coming through, bro. Y- y'all make sure y'all get in tune with everything all my raps got going on. Make sure y'all follow Ill Sound Radio, I-L-L-S-O-U-N-D Radio. Follow me, Groove Nuke, G-R-O-O-V and U-K-E. And man, December 13th at the Promontory, man. We'll see you there live, Cypher. For sure, man. <coughs> I appreciate y'all, man. Keep doing what y'all doing, man. Y'all got something. Oh, yeah, for sure that, man. Love. Make sure y'all get them um, tickets, man. Early bird tickets still in effect. Make sure y'all head over to the yeah, website. Yeah, get them early, man. They be all in my storyline, man. Yes, they be sir. all on my bio. Go buy them tickets, man. Yes, sir. Big facts. Illinois.co. Make sure y'all head over there. Get them tickets from Eventbrite. And, hey, submit y'all music, man. We always open to music submissions. We like it. We play it. And, Jay, what you got to say to them? Man, like he say, man, go grab them tickets before they for gone. Sure, for sure, Because you're going to be mad because you can get it for right now for like $10.26. You feel me? Go grab that yes, sir. before that price bump up. You can even reserve you a table. You feel me? You can pay for you and your homies, your homegirls. Oh, yeah. You feel me? You want to have a date night, whatever, man. If you ain't never been to an Illinois event, this is the perfect time to pop out to one. Plus, you get to meet all the members. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Nah. Plus, bro. you're getting bars. Yes, oh, God. Bro. That's bars it. On bars. You feel me? At the permatory. The women gonna be out. Uh, for the ladies, the men gonna be out. You know what I'm saying? I don't promote the men, though. You know <laughs> <laughs> but, man, shout out to you, bro. Just knowing that, that you put so much into your craft make it so much special. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people rush the process of, of just being an artist. And I feel like like you were speaking on, on how back in the days you would have so many different varieties of music. That's why I feel like I ain't gonna, I don't, don't want to say music dying. You know what I'm saying? But music yeah. starting to sound the same. 
You know, yeah. that's why you have so many people saying R and B doesn't exist when it does. Like it's a lot of dope R and B artists, but everything is harder to find because right. everything sounds the same. Yeah. To the point when you do hear artists that's different, you don't even get them a chance because that's not what your ears are used to no more. So to hear you took your time with it, you know what I'm saying? That make it that much more important for artists like you to come on our platform and, and yeah. speak their piece, you know what I'm saying? Because that, that showcases Chicago in a whole different light. And a lot of people, as soon as you say Chicago, they think drill. But you name Britney Carter, bro. Like Britney Carter Cole, you know man, what I'm saying? You wouldn't dog. even know she from Chicago. She was she just on this ma. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of it's a lot of Shout dope artists them. doing their thing in Chicago. You feel me? And, and I just salute you for just putting that work in, you know what I'm saying? Not making any excuses. A lot of people make excuses. Nah, but no excuses over here. Keep grinding, bro. Whenever you drop that EP, just let us know, you know what I'm saying? I Whenever got you, you drop I got that you. single, let us know, man. We scream 24-7, you know, so you never know when your song going to play up here. For yeah, sure. y'all going to be the first one I send it to, for, for sure. So gratitude, man. Our for computers sure. control our algorithm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but until next week, man, it's Ill Sound Radio. Man, Logging off. Yeah.